It's been a long time at port, but those massive cruise ships are sailing again, offering guests an all-inclusive vacation in one place. But before you set sail, be wary. Here are some shocking secrets from ship insiders the cruise companies don't want you to know. It sounds like the best deal around, an all-inclusive cruise. You pay the fare, get on board, and you don't have to worry about anything else. Eat to your heart's content, enjoy all the shows and activities, but this can be deceptive, as almost all the top cruise line companies put some activities behind a paywall for an additional fee. On many cruises, it'll only be some high-end restaurants for adults that charge you extra money. But on many low-cost cruises, more than half the restaurants and activities will be extra, which means that rock-bottom price may grow quickly once the kids see what's on board. But there are ways you can make that money up. Most cruise ships have a hidden secret. Every restaurant is all you can eat, not just the buffets. This doesn't apply to some of the premium ones, but included restaurants will usually let you order anything you want for no additional fee. This means if you've dug into your salmon and are still a little hungry before dessert, there's nothing stopping you from adding on a steak as a light side. This may vary between ships and companies, but it applies to most dining options. But you can bet that the ship isn't going to advertise it. But we all know what we're here for, the buffet. It's probably the most iconic part of the cruise ship experience. At any hour of the day, you can belly up to the buffet and help yourself, but sometimes the appearance doesn't live up to the hype. You've probably dug into a cruise ship buffet and thought it tastes just a little… off. That's probably because a buffet available at all hours has been sitting out there for a while. While the cruise ships are pretty vigilant about keeping their food safe, that doesn't mean it's going to be the freshest. And if you're worried about the buffet being no more due to the pandemic, breathe easy. It's still there, although a cast member may be serving you now. But that doesn't mean food safety is foolproof. Cruise ships feed more people a day than most any other environment in the world, and they can't get new shipments while at sea. That means they have to keep food for thousands of people fresh for as long as the cruise is going and food poisoning has been the scourge of many a cruise. In 2016, the massive ovation of the seas had an outbreak of over 200 cases of food poisoning traced back to one tainted brunch. And between 2008 and 2014, a staggering 130,000 people reported getting a gastrointestinal illness while on board a cruise. But there's one area of cruise ship life that's even trickier, the bar. Alcohol is usually one of the few things that isn't included in the initial fare. But some companies, including Royal Caribbean, offer unlimited booze packages for extra. And this creates a challenge. How to handle countless drunk guests with cards that let them have more booze. While most cruise companies cater to family travelers and less than 10% buy the booze passes, the companies do have a plan. If a bartender notices a drunk passenger, they can temporarily deactivate their pass until they sober up, at which point they're free to come back for more if they haven't got tossed in the brig. Wait, the brig? Crime can be a problem on cruise ships as it can be anywhere a whole bunch of people are crowded together. All it takes is some knocking over someone's drink and then you're on a fight ship. But the cruise companies are ready. Every ship has a hidden brig somewhere on the ship. This is essentially a jail cell where people can be held until they can be safely removed from the ship. As for the law, because cruise ships frequently sail in international waters, anyone who breaks the law on them is subject to international maritime law and will face trial likely back on the mainland. But maritime law doesn't always work against passengers. If you went to Las Vegas when you were younger, you probably came across a harsh reality. Everything fun was 21 and up. Under US law, you've got to be 21 to gamble, but on cruise ships, you're not under US law. Odds are your cruise ship will have a casino full of slot machines, card games, and roulette wheels. And if you're between the ages of 18 and 20, going on a cruise might be your only chance to win some big money gambling right now, or more likely lose your shirt. When you're on the largest cruise ships, it can be easy to get lost. Cruise ships are massive, we all know that, but most people don't know how massive they are. When Symphony of the Seas, the largest cruise ship ever, debuted in 2015, it was almost 100 feet longer than the largest military aircraft carriers. It could carry almost 9,000 people in total, almost 7,000 passengers plus a crew of over 2,000. It holds 22 restaurants, over 2,700 hotel rooms, and dozens of activities spread out over 18 massive decks. It's been described as a city at sea, and many people find navigating it overwhelming. And with many people on board, there are always risks. There's often one additional passenger on board big cruises, the Grim Reaper. With thousands of people on board at one time, there's always a chance someone's time will run out. It's usually natural causes, especially with how popular cruises are with grandma and grandpa. But accidents are also possible, which is why the cruise companies are so careful to cut people off when they're getting a little too drunk. How often do people die on cruise ships? 
From 2008 to 2018, Port Canaveral's cruise hub reported almost 130 naturally occurring deaths on ships coming out of the port. But the ships have a plan. Similar to the brig, not every spot on a cruise ship is magical. If you go down below, you'll find a climate-controlled area with a grim purpose, the cruise ship morgue. Most of the time, this room goes unused, but should someone die on board, their body will be quickly taken care of in the same way they would on dry land. It'll be taken down there quickly after being placed in a body bag, trying to alert as few people as possible to the fact that there has been a death, and preserved for medical examiners back on land. But in rare cases where the morgues fill up, ships might get creative, storing bodies in a walk-in freezer or flying them back to the mainland. But not all bodies stay on the ship. One of the biggest risks of going on a cruise is that you're in the middle of nowhere, and one wrong move can send you overboard. Most of these are people showing off by getting on the railing or stumbling around while drunk, but foul play can also play a role. Roughly 20 people fall off a cruise ship or ferry every year, and while most of them are rescued, that can be trickier when you're on a fast-moving ship with thousands of people. Between 2009 and 2016, eight people met their end falling off a cruise ship. But it's not the only way to get left behind by the cruise. One of the most exciting parts of a cruise is those ports of call, where you're let off the ship for a full day of fun in the sun. These beach days are so relaxing it's easy to lose track of time, but set an alarm, because when the crew says be back by a certain time, they mean it. They have a tight schedule to keep, and after a short buffer period for any stragglers, they will simply leave anyone who didn't make it behind. For those unfortunate stranded travelers, they'll have to find their way back home on their own. But cruise ship employees are trained for far worse situations. Avast ye mateys! The golden age of piracy is long behind us, but some pirates still sail the open seas, especially off the West African coast. While they're more likely to attack cargo ships, there still have been incidents of them attacking cruise liners. And the crews are trained. When a pirate attack happens, the crew will warn all passengers to get off the decks and away from the windows. They'll then unleash some non-lethal defenses, including water cannons and sound cannons that emit a painful screeching sound. This will hopefully deter the pirates enough for the ship to take evasive action and give all the passengers a crazy story. Some people, however, say cruise ships are a bigger threat to the environment than vice versa. There's a lot of people on board the ship, and a lot of flushing toilets. Cruise ships produce a staggering 140,000 to 210,000 gallons of sewage each week, and it has to go somewhere. The toilets are vacuum flush models, similar to the ones on airplanes, and are usually connected to top-tier water filtration and treatment systems. But once cruise ships are at least 12 miles from shore, it's open season, and much of that human waste gets dumped directly into the oceans below. And that's not the only way these massive liners impact the world. When the bilge water is dumped into the ocean, it creates a massive amount of sulfur dioxide, as much as millions of cars. These giant ships also run on powerful motors, and you can often see them belching dark smoke into the skies. But that smoke doesn't always leave the ship. Studies have been done on the air quality inside the ship, and it revealed the disturbing fact that the air quality on crowded cruise ships can be 20 times worse than the air quality in a busy car-filled metropolis. And it's not surprising that there's so much pollution, given how much moving parts it takes to keep a cruise ship running. The vacuum toilets on cruise ships might look like hotel toilets, but they're a lot more vulnerable to clogs and other problems. They're meant to flush human waste and toilet paper, and nothing else. But most people don't get the hint, and it's very common for people to flush thicker paper products or other items, leading to disgusting clogs. This minor flushing mishap can lead to a major plumbing problem for a ship of thousands, and can derail a whole cruise with disgusting orders if it's in the wrong place. It doesn't take much to disrupt a cruise, and some ships find out the hard way. When the Carnival Triumph ship had an engine fire, it disrupted the power to the entire ship, knocking everything offline. The plumbing system collapsed, leading to rising sewage. But that wasn't the only problem for the ship dubbed the Poop Cruise. Food started going bad, the climate control system went down, and so did the ship's steering system. The more than 3,000 passengers were stranded in a stinking ship for five days in the Gulf of Mexico before salvation came, and they were towed to Alabama by another ship. But it's far from the worst crisis to erupt on a cruise ship. One of the biggest crises any ship can face is an outbreak on board. A contagious disease spreads like wildfire on a crowded cruise, with norovirus being one of the most common. That's why each cruise ship comes with an outbreak prevention plan mandated by the U.S. Health Department. As a virus spreads on board, crew starts quietly taking extra precautions. While they will rarely announce these issues to passengers, there are ways to notice. If the crew is serving you at the buffet, the odds are you should be washing your hands and staying away from that guy blowing his nose on the tablecloth. 
but some epidemics cause more drastic measures. No one's looking forward to the end of their cruise, unless, of course, it might never end. When the COVID-19 pandemic began in 2020, among the first places hit outside of China were cruise ships, and as fear of the virus spread, the ships found themselves quarantined indefinitely. The crew and the passengers, with the virus being largely unknown, no nation was willing to take the risk of letting passengers disembark, and vacationers found themselves confined to rooms getting food delivered to them. The sickest people were airlifted off the boats, but it was weeks before most guests were able to return home, and the crews found themselves in for an even longer stay. The crisis looked like it might be the end of the cruise industry. But as long as there are retirees looking to gamble on a boat, it'll endure. It was almost a year before ships set sail again from most ports, but a lot has changed. Most ships have eliminated self-service buffets, but that's not the only change, especially for the crew. It's common for everyone to have to pass a recent negative COVID test before boarding, and getting approved to get off the ship for all ports of call is a lot trickier. But most of the old favorites of the cruise ships are still there, and so are the little secrets they're hoping that you don't think too hard about before getting on board. For more of the craziest things that ever happen on cruises, check out crazy but true stories that happened on cruise ships, or watch 50 insane facts about the Titanic that you didn't know for tales of the worst cruise ever.